This is Information Service Engineering, lecture number 10, Basic Machine Learning, part one. Before we go now deeper into specific algorithms of machine learning, we have to talk about the main challenges of machine learning. What makes it difficult? What kind of pitfalls do we have to avoid? First of all, we have learned that machine learning is most times learning by experience. So everything depends on your training data. If your training data is of insufficient quality, however, then you can't expect too much, let's say, of your results. Interesting fact, as you see here for, from this graphics, for example, which indicates on the x-axis, the number of training data here by number of millions of words that are used for a specific algorithm, compared to on the y-axis the achieved accuracy for a specific task you see there however these single lines represent different kind of algorithms so different machine learning algorithms they perform almost identical well on complex problems when given enough data so this is one of the problems if you give them insufficient training data and insufficient quantity of training data things Will not work that's quantity quality so what about non-representative training data of course your training data should be representative for let's say the entire universe of data you want to process there what happens if you are dealing with non-representative training data famous example from history this was in 1936 so in 1936 the literary digest wrongly predicted the winning of president candidate Landon with 57% of the votes against Roosevelt. We all know from history Roosevelt won. I mean, what they did there, they were relying on a poll. And this poll they were doing, they were using phone directories, list of magazine subscribers and club membership lists that were public. Now you might ask yourself, so where is, where is the error? Of course, the error is we have 1936. In 1936, of course, only sufficiently wealthy people owned a telephone, were a member of a specific club. So therefore, the data that they had was not really representative for the entire, let's say, American um, population. Therefore, of course, then also the prediction, the estimation went wrong. Talking about the data, of course, there can also be noise. There can be errors in your data, in your training data and outliers that are not really representative. So you always have to watch the data quality. From poor quality data, you can't expect first class results. So this is really important. So again, uh, next to insufficient quantity, next to non-representative training data, poor data quality, of course, is an issue. However, sometimes, of course, you do not use all your data that you have. You have to identify what are the relevant features, which make sense from which can I really predict something. If you choose irrelevant features, again, you cannot expect to get good results. So here you have an example. For example, what I have here in this data statistics, I have on the X axis, the birth date of soccer players and on the y-axis the number of goals they achieved and by thinking of something let's say um, the number of goals that a player achieves is somehow dependent on his or her birthday of course that is a poor choice so you really should think of which features to choose so what you do is there usually you do feature engineering so you you really think carefully which are the most promising features where do i let's say identify correlations or potential correlations between my data and the stuff i want to predict and of course then you are choosing these kind of features you have to extract these features probably you have to create new features by aggregating stuff so this is feature engineering for our soccer example probably it makes more sense to look at what position a specific player was playing so i guess that for example defensive players probably achieve less goals than uh, offensive players or even the goalkeeper. Okay, however, 
there are more challenges and another challenge so even your data might be nice and well and representative one of the problems you run into with these kind of adaptive learning algorithms is so-called overfitting overfitting the training data to be too well adapted to exactly the sample that you have chosen if you do this you are losing the ability to generalize and then the algorithm might perform really bad on previously unseen data so the overfitted model follows exactly the training data this is the green line that you see here uh, in, in our graphics but what you get there you get a rather high dependency on potential noise and a lack as i told you of the generalization capabilities of your model and of course then the overfitted model is likely to have a higher error rate on you on unseen data compared to a regularized model so what you have to do is you have to make sure that you are able to generalize well enough you know um, so the consequence you have there is of course you have to stop adapting your model to stop training your model before the algorithm overfits you remember when we are looking at the single steps in the workflow of machine learning there was this data set split into training and test and simply for controlling whether your model already overfits or not within the training phase what you usually do is you separate a third small part as a validation data set where you simply try and look what happens in the training if i apply in the training um, some some uh, uh, my algorithm also on the validation data set so and then you can see okay you're you're getting better 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 on the validation data set and then there is a point in the training when it's getting worse again so this means now we are starting to overfit and we should end our training for this you have a third one a validation data set but we will talk about this later on in another section of this lecture okay last thing what we have to look at is of course bias what is bias bias describes systematic or repeatable errors in a computer system that create unfair outcomes such as for example privileging one arbitrary group of users over others so learning itself is not possible without any bias so there is no bias free learning because you have a so-called inductive bias so generalization based learning is only possible if the learning system has a so-called inductive bias if it's able to draw these kind of conclusions on the other hand you might have something like a language bias or restriction bias which means not every model can be expressed by the given hypothesis language that you have chosen and you might have a search bias so typically learning algorithms are based on a, a greedy search strategy that tries to optimize to minimize some kind of error and this is greedy and then you might get stuck in some local optimum and not find really the global optimum in your your error which means then there the bias directs the search and influences you know which model is learned there with consequences you can't tell and of course the data that you are using also might be biased so this is independent of any machine learning algorithms and again this is how representative is the data for let's say the infinite set of all possible instances of your of your of, of the population of the universe you are trying to apply uh, apply the algorithm to and there of course it's often possible if you are looking uh, uh, nowadays often data on the web is used for for training and there of course there are lots of kind of, of biases if you especially look at social media platforms there are these kind of filter bubbles and stuff and um, yeah these kind of biases that are introduced by using this data they can have impacts ranging from inadvertent privacy violations to reinforcing social biases of race gender sexuality or ethnicity and of course we try to avoid that or we have to try to avoid that and have to take care of exactly these challenges before we then make use of the results of our machine learning algorithm and how in general our machine learning algorithm works we will see in the next section of this lecture when we are talking about the basic machine learning workflow